welcome to Flying Chariots The Rise podcast with your hosts, Chrissy and Dustin. And today we have an awesome guest, Laura DeForest. Um, she is an awesome tarot reader. She's going to do a tarot reading for Dustin today. Um, and she's also my fellow paranormal investigator. And um, I don't know if you want to talk about your visions today. It's up to you. Um, <laughs> And she's also very knowledgeable about the Anunnaki. So I want to talk about all that today, but before we delve into um, Dustin's psyche, <laughs> okay. as well as his love life and personal life with a tarot reader, um, I wanted to maybe talk about the Anunnaki because I am like a jack of all trades, master of none. And I know a little bit about the Anunnaki. But yeah. not really a ton. And I know you and Dustin are so knowledgeable on the Anunnaki. Um, all oh, I know okay. really, so far, all I know really is that um, there were beings on another planet who, um, I guess, they're, they were having some issues and they needed gold. Mm -hmm. And we had gold on our planet. So mm -hmm. they essentially created a slave race. Um, and... Uh, they mix their genetic information with ours. And that is basically known as modern man. Um, mm -hmm. So that's all I know so far. And I actually need you guys to educate me. I'm so curious about this. So what do you know about the Anunnaki? So what, what I know is that right now in this um, time frame, they are not the Anunnaki anymore. They are They've evolved, evolved into something called the Pleiadians, mm -hmm. which are uh, located in, I want to say the Taurus constellation now. That's their home. But not all of them have evolved into this Pleiadian race. Some of them have gone on to other dimensions, uh, higher dimensions um, in completely other universes. So they're on a like completely different frequency that would not be humanoid at all. Um, the subatomic, subatomic, the, uh, super conductive gold, that's, that's what they turn the gold into for a source of energy that they use for their DNA, essentially. Um, and the planet they come from, Nibiru, is a rogue planet. It's a planet that travels from galaxy to galaxy. Um, right now it's, I would say it's nowhere near our solar system from what I know, um, I could be wrong, but most of them don't live there anymore. They've, they've evolved into something else on what we would call our time frame of uh, this, you know, uh, timeline that we live out. That's interesting. So th they've actually, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we've actually identified what we believe to be this planet. I, I think they've actually identified this planet planet what they believe to be this planet which i can't remember what it's called it had like an end name <laughs> yeah it used to there there's an asteroid belt i think it's a little past mars it's been a while since i've read zachariah stetchen's book yes. but it split into different uh some of it became earth and some of it became another planet and part of the moon i believe and then there's a permanent asteroid belt there and that's what happened when Nibiru, I, I believe, entered the solar system. Uh, that's essentially how they travel is by a rogue planet and then short distance is used for like um, what they would travel in, what we would call a UFO, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. um, <clears throat> so they came when we were basically Neanderthals and there was all different like, you know, uh, types of Neanderthals and essentially they injected their DNA into the Neanderthal and that's how they became human so they could talk to them and tell them what they needed. At one point they were told to leave um, because they had, because really the point of living out a life is to have free will and they kind of interjected. So the other the other thing that i know is that there wouldn't be religion if it wasn't for the anunnaki there would there wouldn't be there would be spirituality but not necessarily religion Why because is that? 
the Old Testament in the Bible is basically the on uh, all about the Anunnaki, how they interfered with humans, yeah. um, and based off of not just the Bible, but there's other religions as well. Oh yeah. Um, that they've intervened, like Enil is another word for Zeus. If you knew about like Greek mythology and Egyptian mm-hmm. mythology, I I don't know much about, but they have certain names for them as well. So they've always been interfering in a very religious sense throughout the human experience. Um, so if it weren't for them interjecting in that sense, we wouldn't have a set religion that everyone goes by. It would just be very spiritual. I'm not saying, you know, right. Right. You're right. You're right. Um, so in that sense, they are connected with humans until we can get on until we understand how to like transmute darkness into light pretty much to make limited and fear-based beliefs into unlimited beliefs Mm -hmm. into pure unconditional love because they didn't when they came here that's that wasn't their intention their intention was very selfish yes um but they know that you know so in that sense they have to help the human race not intervene because there's free will but to pass on information um and there's a lot of different ways that that can happen i mean it can happen through getting um what's the word kidnapped by an alien (laughs) abducted yeah yes abducted thank you i don't know why that just slipped my mind but you know (laughs) that's i guess that's one way you know it could happen but um for me, I believe that one of my spirit guides is an alien, and in particular, an Anunnaki. Although he is not Anunnaki anymore, he appears to me that way because it's the most humanoid form that you can, you know, see in a in a certain frequency. Right. Um, you, you uh, from what I understand, the Anunnaki, they were very large, very tall people because oh, the yeah. gravity was different on their planet. We have a yes. lot of gravity yes. here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were yeah. giants. They actually like yeah. hold gr- uh, gl- grown lions in their arms like kittens. That's yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, they're, <laughs> they're pretty huge. Uh-huh. Okay. And aliens yeah. in general are known to be tall, but it's a gravity thing on their planet mm-hmm. uh, versus ours, I guess, is why. Yeah, yeah. And, there, and there's many different types of humanoids. I would say, you know, there's, you know, reptilian and, and, and ant-like or um, insects-like. But they all have like a torso, a face, that type of thing. And that's the like closest type of frequency that we could see them on. There are other, you know, aliens that are on a whole different wave of frequency that don't even have the form that we have. And it would be just like, like unfathomable to even talk mm-hmm. about in the English language. Yeah. Just... <laughs> oh, <interesting. laughs> yeah. But yeah, right. We do have our human like ETs too, with the blind yeah. hair, blue eyes. They can, yeah, walk, yeah. they can definitely walk amongst us. And they do. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's even like a Harvard study that even says that they they are just walking amongst us. <laughs> just living, yeah, it's living crazy. Their life and shit. That's amazing. Um, but no, that uh Inanaki story, it's just it's beautiful, it's and it's poetic in a sense. The mm-hmm. fact that like these um ancient astronauts were coming because their planet was deteriorating of gold and other materials, not just gold, but yeah, they were, they were, they came to earth and they saw there was so much material here. They're like, fuck, I'm not, we, yeah. we don't have all the manpower to fucking do it. And then they saw yeah. they had the homeless erectus, like you were just saying, and they slapped their DNA into it where they, you know, kind right. of started obeying, they get, they got like a godlike status right mm-hmm. away. So they oh, got like, exactly. Oh. And that's, that's basically how they start communicating with humans. It's like, I'm going to tell you what to do and you're going to worship me like I'm a god. Yes. Because and then this all went down in Mesopotamia, correct? And like, from what I read, mm-hmm. um, they actually found, like in Sumeria, they found the remains of some queen who would have been a, a hybrid and mm-hmm. her skull is actually elongated. elongated. Yeah. Oh, so, interesting. But I guess yeah. what, they're not doing uh-huh. genetic testing on uh, yeah. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. I got to spend... <laughs> well, it's forbidden archaeology. We yeah, keep, right. Keep that stuff on the low, because uh, we can't explain it right away. The, again, there's we have pyramids on every continent. We have exactly. pyramids here yeah. in Wisconsin, if you believe it or not. We have land pyramids and mm-hmm. underwater pyramids. 
and and the bottom of lakes. Yes, <laughs> then, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, just the fact that we have these megalithic structures, but we have, we look back at their toolbox and you see dental floss and chicken bones, and you're like, "What the fuck are we doing here?" Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then what is this? No. But at the same time, these ancient people are sketching into the rock that these multiple gods are coming down to help them with technology and mm -hmm. mathematics yeah. and uh, yeah. stuff that needs a lot of that to build a lot of this shit you know what i'm saying if you like mess right. up something on the bottom of the pyramid if you make it up all the way on top it's all gonna be fucked up you know what i'm saying yeah, everything has to be it's, fucking it's, perfect yeah but no i'm mean, like what's what healthy slave are you whipping on the back to move 80 ton boulders across different terrains are you fucking kidding me no way <laughs> <laughs> that's, Not insane. Possible. that's insane <laughs> But no, it's. I think uh, they admit that, that, but they won't, you know. Mm -hmm. But no, I, how it was done either. Well, I like how you said, like, um, even before these ancient astronauts came, like the first religions were like um, spiritual, or even I like to say the, the weather, like the lightning, the the rain, the, mm -hmm. the stuff that you can actually physically touch and feel, like the earthquakes yeah. and stuff like that. That was the gods until mm -hmm. like one day, all the stories all around the world became the same where these gods came down in flying vehicles with you know fire and smoke and yeah. they come out, out multiple yeah. of them. Yeah, like uh like ancient India where they talk about yeah. the flying Vimana with the, mm -hmm. their gods coming down with blue skin and multiple arms and they have different talents mm -hmm. and different like things kind of like the Greek gods they all had different like ways of uh learning and teaching humans different um aspects of life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's uh Again, it started, it made a cargo cult. You know, if you know what the cargo cults are. It's funny that you said, car are you in the cults? <laughs> I am in the cults. I'm really in the cargo cults. <laughs> so the cargo oh, okay. cults uh, started, um, there's 150 cargo cults that still exist today. And they mainly started during World War II when we were fighting the Japanese in the Pacific. And we had some of those islands we set military bases on, but some of those islands were inhabited by indigenous people that had never seen airplanes before. And I thought that, that there were the gods or their ancestors bringing them the goods you know, oh. to them. But then they realized that the white men are coming out of them like, what, what, what <laughs> white man pirate is taking their shit? You know, after the white man left these islands, they started making runways out of the jungle with bamboo fetishes of life-size airplanes and they would write usa on their chest with bamboo rifles marching to entice airplanes to land on their spaceport right so it's like the cargo cult yeah. has started where something like they just couldn't like they don't know the nuts and bolts of the thing that made it fly it was like the magic it's uh the gods or uh if you even go further back like i said india with the with the, Fima, the vimana and then even further back in uh i'm sorry in uh <laughs> where is it brazil the Kayapo mm -hmm. Indians, they they talk about a story about Bep Karoti, an like ancient astronaut that came down with fire and smoke on top of their mountain, and it came into their village. And the brave Indians came, <laughs> went there to try to fight him, and then like threw spears and arrows, and I guess they all turned to dust when it hits his clothes. But he's in this like bulbous suit, kind of like the Michelin man, you know, like all stacking mm -hmm. tires and shit. Yeah. <laughs> but he had like a glass <laughs> helmet, he had, like white skin with a beard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, yeah. he had a weapon himself and he pointed at a tree and it exploded and all the Indians ran into the forest and he stood in their village for days, just like a statue and more brave Indians went there with some food and offered it to his feet. And then he started speaking their language and they're like, whoa, how do you, how do you know how to speak? You know, they're like, well, I had to listen to you guys in the, the bush and learn your language and, blah, blah. and then he stayed with them for years and taught them agriculture, mathematics. And they, uh -huh. they, there's a school that still exists today under his name that they just learn and they, they celebrate yearly. Uh, this, they sing a song with all the women that like have this guy dressed in a salt, uh, straw suit <laughs> and he's just dancing around and they just talk about the song about him coming down, teaching them agriculture and then going back to the stars, you know, this is a interesting. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. It's, I think it there's like the carvings of like an astronaut, isn't there? Like. Isn't that in South America? I don't know. I can't remember what tribe, but it was what basically you were talking about. Like an ancient astronaut, you know, it's an oh, exciting, but like the... it looks like a man in a spacesuit. Yes. You know, with his feet on pedals. Yes. I can't remember. Oh, that it's, uh, I forget, Palenque. Uh, I know who you're talking about. 
Yeah. He's, uh, no, that's another amazing. I can't remember. That's another, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But they yeah. found that giant slab that had him in this like capsule. It looks like a. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like he's in like a, you know. He had a breathing a apparatus on his yeah. face. Yeah. And his, his hands are working some gadgets and his feet are yeah. on some pedals. Do you know, like when they like, found that, it was like, it took like five years to get that down into that stairwell. Cause I guess they put big ass boulders all the way down the stairwell. Wow. It took three years to take all those boulders out. And they found that giant slab with the like ancient astronaut on there. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my God. A lot of these ancient gods were really aliens who came down and taught us things. Yeah. And helped us with our technology and helped us to build things. Mm -hmm. They were gods, um, but really they were aliens. It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just misunderstood technology at the time. And they didn't have the vocabulary mm -hmm. to de describe what they were seeing. So that's why you see like flying shields or flying chariots or flying turtles. <laughs> you know, yeah, like <laughs> yeah, it, it can get like as like crazy as a flying turtle, but there's like a rhyme and reason to it at the same time. It's crazy. <laughs> Laura, have you seen you said um one of your spiritual advisors mm -hmm. is actually an Anunnaki have you yeah. actually visualized what they look like yeah um I mean it's not what he looks like right now right now my belief is that he's in a whole other universe but when he comes to advise me he is Anunnaki and what he looks like is uh kind of like a, a tall humanoid with darker skin but like with crystals like embedded in his skin and he uses those crystals as a form of storing information that's not a logic of humanoids so when he goes to these other dimensions higher dimensions it's it's a another means of storing information it's it's i know it's very bizarre um, well, that's interesting. Well, you know as well that different crystals have different um, energy vibrations. Yeah. So I wonder if it has something to do with that. Yeah, it does. Um, I couldn't go because the way that we communicate isn't really like speaking. It's more like visual. And uh, one of the the dreams that I had that he showed me was one of their book. It and Dustin probably knows it's it's called like the Book of Life that they have. And in there is a section where there's these, um, what he showed me, it was kind of like a test for me, I don't know, but there was like 20 questions and the questions were like, I can't even describe the logic. And I'm like, how do I answer these? And he was like, you don't answer them, you solve them. And I was like, I, I, I could only solve maybe three of them. And he was like but that's okay because if you were able to solve all of them you wouldn't be a human you would be like a completely different frequency and the only way i could describe it is like <clears throat> like the green leaf is a you know the blue sky with spaghetti on top i don't think it's just <laughs> like what i can't even you know it's it's mind-blowing to start to think in a, a different logic that is a completely different humanoid frequency. It's just mind blowing. There would be no way that I would be able to solve all these problems, but it was it was a very straight, it was like a dream how it was presented to me. <laughs> now you have other visions as well. I do, or, yeah. Do you want to go into detail about that? I wasn't sure how private they are or if you wanted to divulge oh, I do see orbs yeah. um I do see orbs a lot of them um it was it, you know over the years it was very hard to make sense of them um but what I concluded recently was that they look more like chakras than anything else because the more I look at them the more detail they get um and actually, quite recently, in the last 24 hours, I figured out that the orange chakra that I saw most recently was actually a, some kind of a, a frequency, an entity from another universe. And I don't know why, but I am connected to this other universe that's outside of our own with a whole different set of logic and physics that I can't even, like, I couldn't even dive into all the way because 
you know, I wouldn't be here. Right, if right. That you makes know, any just, sense. <laughs> Laura, I, I believe it because as I've said to Dustin, um, when I receive a tarot reading from you, yeah, I literally can like just feel and sense and see something divine working through you. It's the yeah. weird thing that there's just something divine working through you that I can't physically see with my eyes, but I know right. it's there. Right. Yeah. Um, and also even on our ghost hunts, things are trying to kill you all the time. I know. They, You're such a target. So <laughs> <laughs> they really hate me. I really irritate. <laughs> it's because I have, I'm so strongly opinion, even the living probably get irritated by me, you know, <laughs> you know, this is this and that is that, you know. <laughs> But, but you know, my opinion isn't everyone has their truth and there's multiple truths and everyone is no one's wrong. That's that's just my opinion. No one's as long as you're not working out of your ego. Then right. you're not wrong. You're living in your truth. It's not like I can go over and stand in your shoes. You're already standing in them. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no yeah. way. Um, but I appreciate I'm always honored and humble to hear about other people's views and opinions you know, because their experiences are just as real as my own. Even, mm -hmm. even if I don't agree, it doesn't matter. I will believe you because that is how the laws of physics, that's how the laws of nature really work. Right. You know, I there's multiple realities. Yeah. 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 I Do you ever figure out why you were seeing the flies? Where no, I, I still, to, that is a mystery above. to me. To this day, it's still a mystery. I still see them. Not every night, though. So it's just yeah. in your dreams you're seeing these flies? Or is no, it... this it's when I wake up from a deep sleep. Mm. And it's not in my room. It's like outside of my room because I keep my door open. Yeah, it's, it's like, like they have a bunch of flies in your room. room. <laughs> <laughs> they have fruit flies in this yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> that would suck. He's got some rotten bananas. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what that is. I, still I don't, don't know, know if that has anything to do with Beelzebub, okay? Because we just went on an investigation, Dustin. <laughs> yeah. And we, <laughs> and like <laughs> twice the ghost box said Beelzebub. Yes. <laughs> I don't, yep. Laura, you know more about Beelzebub than I do. What is that? Us yeah, he's, I guess he's considered like a, a throne demon. You know, in the Christian religion, he would be a throne demon. But Beelzebub in particular, over the centuries of, you know, the lifetime of humans, he's like converted almost from religion to religion. So it's almost like that's his superpower. It's like he's not subject to any rules. Um, but yet, in the Christian religion, he is like the chief or the second in line to Satan, like he's right Damn. under him. Um, Damn. Although I don't think he would like to admit that, you know. <laughs> is his name Pazuzu? <laughs> <laughs> For all of those people who love uh, the exorcist, that was, that was the demon that took over oh, that girl's body. Oh, his name yeah. Zoo. Uh, was it what did they say? Kazuzu? Kazuzu? Zuzuzu? Yeah, Kazuzu. Yeah, <laughs> Something like Some that. Shit. Yeah. I've never heard of, of that, but no. You know, I'm I'm probably gonna Google that now. Yeah. Yeah. Now I well, there's actually that. a there's a weird there's a case that was on you ever seen Vice? They have like the documentaries of like weird murders and shit and just weird I, I've heard of it, yeah. It's on YouTube. But anyways, there's the okay. guy who uh goes by the name of Pazuzu. Uh and he's just some evil ass fucking kid. And he's this grimy. He lived with his mom. And then mom was like had the her room really pristine and clean, but the whole house is like hoarded and just trash. Oh, he had all his crazy friends come over and like do Satanistic shit, like eat cats and bite off the heads of bats and like fucking he ended up killing some dude oh, in his God. basement and torturing or tortured him then killed him i guess cut off all his limbs and it was really fucked up shit when he was alive yeah it was really fucked up <clears throat> Ouch. But, 
the fact that it was this weird culture of people that would just go to this house and he'd had this people you could piss in this corner you'd shit in the on oh this, my god there's a bunch of crazy shit you could do at this dude's house he didn't <laughs> have like and then when the cops went in there with like the, their cameras and shit it was like swastikas and like weird arabic oh shit god. written everywhere like oh really fucked up shit <clears throat> <laughs> so anyways yeah. they caught that kid <laughs> he ended up killing himself by like he filed his teeth down when he was on meth one time and then apparently he just bit into his arm and hit an artery and then killed himself in prison <gasps> oh wow damn yes so yeah there's a lot of bizarre people out there and then yeah. know, there's, there's another <laughs> sorry we're getting to the weird shit now <laughs> no that's all right i like your weird favorite. all right well there's a there's a case in germany <laughs> This is where my German colleague, Daniel, introduced me to this story, and it's pretty wild. So this guy had a fantasy of um, meeting a lover and eating him, eating his lover, basically. And okay. he, he found some dude on the dark yeah, web that wanted like to... Alive. Some, yeah, some, he found some dude on the dark web that wanted to be eaten, eaten, eaten alive by oh, his God. lover. <laughs> so this, they set up a date... And uh, this guy set up multiple <laughs> video cameras and he filmed every single second of this date. Oh, so, yeah. He shot God. this dude's dick off at first and they both ate his dick. <laughs> the guy started going into shock and shit. So they threw his, he threw his body in this ice. Oh, my cream. gosh. They started I... slitting his throat and shit and this fucking, yeah, he films everything. <laughs> and this and guy was his... like in pain but enjoying it. Right. Oh. Yeah, he's dying in this torture, but loving it at the same time. Very macabre, very wow. psychologically fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh and I come from Wisconsin. We have a bunch of motherfuckers like this. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, we had a, it was like six years ago, there was a guy who got caught red handed fucking a dead deer on the side of the road. <laughs> And, and apparently a year later, or a year before that, he was, he got caught harassing a horse. So yeah. Oh my gosh. Besides Ed Gein and Jeffrey Dahmer, we have horse fuckers. <laughs> that's a, that's an interesting goal to have. I don't know. <laughs> it's like that that's my passion. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm no, okay. sorry for being off topic then, but no, that's, no, that's uh... all right. It's all right. It's 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 crazy that people, you know, have these weird, you know, things, fetishes, passions. It's, yes. Yes. But like I feel like evil stuff like that is like, you know, it's like when you're too far into your physical mind and not your higher dimensional mind. It's like sure. you don't know what unconditional love is. Yes. It's all conditional. Yes. It's it's yeah. just move. But I could I can't imagine. I can't imagine, you know, yeah. Something was missed in parenting there. <laughs> For sure. Oh my God! Yeah. Woo. Where did we go wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, took it. It. we took him to church every Sunday. Yeah. Well, we Maybe that was it. I don't know. What? I'm oh, sorry, Chrissy. Wasn't Dustin? Wasn't your coworker a psycho or something? Oh yeah. So oh. recently, um, my coworker that I worked with for 22 years committed murder, first degree intentional homicide. Because oh, wow. apparently the dude that he, it was his old, a friend of his, they got into an argument and then his friend said, your daughter's fat and ugly. And he went into his house, grabbed a pistol and went back and shot him in the stomach. Wow. <laughs> and like, die. Yeah. And then he tried to like delete a bunch of like video cameras and shit. So they, I guess the cops really found, I mean, they got him pretty quick, but yeah. It's, it's, Oh my gosh. I think we just dodged a bullet, right? Like I could have easily someone could have pissed, pissed that dude off. off at work. Yeah. <laughs> Don't insult that guy. Holy yeah, right. God. Especially his daughter. Holy Christ. <laughs> yeah. Really. That's a close call for you, Dustin. <laughs> you dodged a bullet. <laughs> you did. Gosh. That's freaking. Wow. Yeah. But uh, so would you guys meet for the first time or how'd you guys find each we, other? Yeah, we met online, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, on Facebook, I think. I don't know who friended who, but that's. I friended you. I oh, you did? Okay. You. <laughs> like a year ago, right? Well, I maybe think, more I than a year ago. More than a year. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we totally just clicked and yep. we were like into the same stuff. Our sons mm -hmm. are basically the same age. Yeah. Like uh -huh. it just works. And then. 
you know, she was mentioning she wanted to put together a paranormal team. And I was like, are you kidding me? I've been wanting to do this for <laughs> so long now. And I finally had the resources to like buy stuff. Yes. <laughs> you know, when you're 19, so... you don't have the resources. Um, <laughs> but we're finally getting together and investigating. We're mm -hmm. probably going to explore an abandoned psych facility next, right, Laura? Yeah, but you said it was in Brooklyn County, or yeah, is that where? Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I, I'm going to have to look at the history on that. I know it's going to be fun yeah. too. Really, but a lot of really gnarly stuff went down in those psych facilities. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, Usually but, the energy's off. Yeah, yeah, but the idea, but the fact that we can just go in there like without permission, I love that. Right. Well, All right. Cool. Easy access. <laughs> so has there any places that um you've been without Chrissy like other um other I've, I've spots? Done, yeah I've been to like graveyards to mm. like test things out and stuff and they're usually always haunted um mm. so I, I usually always pick up on something there um trying to think of anything memorable um there's more memorable uh occurrences that have happened to me that where i haven't been looking for it if that mm -hmm. makes sense like sure uh it's like 20 years ago i was like with some friends we were at, like we were in Ver the vermont area and like in the wilderness somewhere smoking some pot and we were just sitting there and then all of a sudden like we were looking in the woods and we saw some like red eyes and we we're like i don't you know i don't know what that is but then the more we started looking at it the more they multiplied there was like 20 of them and we're like let's get the fuck out of here so we got in our car we started driving and we couldn't see them behind us but there was like dust picking up as if something was like running after us oh, um shit. definitely four-legged creatures that's all i mean but but we couldn't see we could just see the eyes mm, and that's... i don't know what that was to this day <laughs> I, I have no idea but i'd be freaked the fuck out hey it, it was <laughs> oh my god you're like Whew, what would have happened if we stayed like i wonder yeah. that because i'm i'm freaking weird you know i'm like i wonder what would have happened if i stayed if we yeah. stayed you know it wouldn't have been good Probably not. <laughs> Probably get another sprained ankle or something. Oh my god! At least something worse. <laughs> Damn ghosts! I honestly, Ugh. I think cryptids are really interesting. I don't know if you saw a cryptid that night, but cryptids are also quite interesting. I, I don't. What is that? Is that like so a cryptids? They did they use the word term cryptid? Cryptid uh -huh. to describe really any animal that we haven't identified yet. Okay. Um, or that. Maybe they're out there. There's myths of them being out there, but um, like I'm trying to think of a good example. I mean, honestly, technically, Bigfoot is kind of a cryptid, is oh, yeah. not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that would be the most well-known example. Yeah. Or the Mothman, or um, Mothman the Dogman here in Wisconsin. Perfect example. Dogman, Mothman. And then we have mm. uh, even in uh, the Congo, we they talk about dinosaurs still. There's like legends of seeing cool. like the really? brontosauruses with the long necks. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Or the Loch Ness you know, monster is a good example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Loch Ness is another one they talk yeah. about. Yes. Yeah, and you can, and also I don't know if you've heard of the Montauk project where no, there is some kind of an island off of Montauk. It's it's government based. It's very private where they do a lot of like genetic alterations so you hear about like flying pigs well they can make them although they don't live long they live maybe you know three days or so but they'll make them and they'll release them into the wild and they just live out their very short-term life and people on montauk beach have found very strange things like like a pig with wings like it's just weird. <laughs> with wings. It's, no, yeah. I heard that. Well, I know that Japan recently uh, passed a law that they're doing human slash uh, animal hybrids 
in labs now. Oh, yeah. So is I'm that what you're talking about? Is that, that I don't know if they're releasing him into the wild or you mm-hmm. know, oh, God. obviously have to be, but yeah, again, like the island of Dr. Moreau is like the real mm-hmm. shit is happening, you know? Like that's some shit. I don't know if you guys seen that movie. That movie is no, I'm I'm gonna though. Oh my god, that movie's <laughs> insane. And it's a good book. But um okay. yeah, no, it's the fact that we're gonna have like human i think even i don't know if the was it the germans or the russians are trying to make human hybrids during world war ii of like gorilla chimpanzee mm. soldiers yours you heard of this or they, they like, yeah there was a lot of experiments going on back then mm-hmm. are they making two-headed dogs and shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. the crap out of me when it's, I saw that. The dogs that yeah, they that's horrible. sewed together. That yeah, that's horrible. Horrendous. That's fucking that's like crazy. Is that what they're called? I can't. Yeah. And I saw another yeah. video, like an old video of like, they kept like a dog head alive by pumping the blood just keeps flowing through oh it, right? like God. a machine. But they're like, you know, they'd poke at it and that'd be, yeah. yeah. Biting, biting and shit like this poor animal really fucking cre- yeah right Ugh. i'm pretty sure there's so sad. Well, we had our fair share of human experimentations oh, yeah. during the nazis and even in japan they were doing a bunch of crazy fucked up shit <clears throat> yes for sure yeah Not i really. believe it mm-hmm I feel like the russians are always the ones to do this crazy shit <laughs> like the dogs what's that the russians god <laughs> i don't, that, I don't that know fit like, the like, vodka <laughs> It's got yeah, me thinking. Right? It's gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> drink, drink some vodka and do some genetic so, altering. You know? Yeah, so two heads. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. Well, actually, there is another guy from Russia. As he, he has <clears throat> a YouTube channel. It's really kind of fucked up. He was experimenting putting his own semen into chicken eggs. And they're like they're forming weird ass fucked up creatures. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So like you have it like you inject the egg with his sperm and then put it like a bandage or something to wrap it up and then put it in like something or I don't know if in a closet in the dark for whatever how long. <laughs> and yeah, he, each time he's doing this, all these weird things are coming out with like moving and shit. Like they're all deformed, looking crazy fuck as it should be, oh. or <laughs> Oh my god! Who's slapping their so fucking gross. sperm into chicken eggs, making these fucked up shit? <laughs> this is he, my son. He made he this made one. <laughs> <laughs> Can you buy that Toys R Us? Is that a Toys R Us kit? No. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> right? No, it's uh, it's fucked up. That is that's crazy. Uh No, uh, no, yeah. There's experiments happening since. I think that, mm. I guess since the dawn of time, since our ancient ancestors oh, yeah. here have been well, messing with our DNA. About, like, <laughs> like that, like in the 1930s and the 1940s, they did a lot of weird stuff. Like they did. Yeah. Uh, what was that project called where they made um a whole marine ship or is it a navy ship disappear? And then what? Um, it was something that Einstein originally came up with and they tested it for like war reasons where they would what what is it called not uh transportation but um where it's like teleportation yes teleportation thank you i had a loss for words there um they they just they made this whole shit disappear Mm. And when it came back into existence, they found people like in the walls and the floors, just like stuck. Oh, it was yes. really bizarre. It was so bizarre. <laughs> so but, they just never tried it again. Oh yeah, no, they, they, yeah. Still they did. It. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reason why not to. No, I actually I heard something like that too. Or yeah. certain yeah. even uh, spaceships that they found or. Um, crash landed they they talked about this one guy military guy that went into one um and it was only in there for to him it only felt like 10 or five minutes maybe mm. but when he went into this it's probably a 30 feet 20 foot ufo and when he walked in it said that he went when he walked into it it was like a football stadium like okay. it, it makes oh. sense like yeah it's like what the fuck i went to this thing it was like only 20 feet and then i go into it it's a, a stadium uh-huh. and he 
he started getting really sick or whatever. And then he gets out and he was, on, he was in there for four hours from the outside, but he's, he only said he was in there for five on his side, but it was like five hours, you know? So each minute was like yeah. an hour, you know, like, whoa. Wow. So the time is warped in that right. shit too. Right. So fuck. <laughs> to warp time yet but i have the feeling that life on other planets have found out how to warp yeah time space mm -hmm. even though like time is an illusion well, time itself. Is just an illusion. it's just something we it's, made up really yeah well it's it's yeah it's made up to like understand that even though everything is all in the same it's separated by a frequency like you know, right. when you watch TV, you can't watch every channel at once. They're separated by frequencies, but they're all yeah. happening at once. Yeah. That's the illusion. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's crazy that existence is not subject to time, but time is subject to existence. I always mm -hmm. think of it that way, where when you live out a three or fourth dimensional timeline, you have to incorporate time to separate everything. Otherwise, it you know your 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 fifth dimensional self knows that it's just an illusion. Sure, it's just how it works, I guess. But... Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's how I try to make sense of it. I don't know. It's... Yeah, well, everyone has their. I guess... I, like I said, like Earth is the Disneyland of the galaxy. It's just so much shit here happening. Yes, you know what I'm saying? it is. It's crazy. It's like a whole orchestrate, like a whole play. It's just, yeah. and we're all just living it out in this, you know. And, and it, it makes we might you find, wonder. We might find all the answers when we do die. Like mm -hmm. we have some alien guys. Like, okay, this is how it really was. <laughs> You're like, oh <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I would hey, it's waste my time dressing all crazy for some religion, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, Wasting my, my time looking like that. And like, okay, weather. <laughs> now let's try this a different way and reincarnate. You be the psychopath yeah. and I'll be the hero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Are we in a simulation? Mm. We could be. It's um, like the Matrix almost. I mean, if, if you believe it, then yeah, I think that we are, yeah. Because it is an illusion. It's an it's all an illusion, so it could be a matrix. If you right. want to put a label on it, yeah. But oh, yeah. you don't have to put that I feel label like, on it. I feel like we can almost steer our destiny with like our energy. Like like what I'm doing with my life right now with this whole podcast mm -hmm. <clears throat> and like throwing out certain energy out there. I yeah. especially especially experienced this weekend. <laughs> It's it's coming back to me somehow. Again, right? <laughs> Just splash my sexuality out there, and it's, there we go. Hey, Something will happen, I guess. If but that, no, it's, that's uh, what you want to do. You do it. <laughs> oh, I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> well, life's too damn short. I want to be a bunny. That's right. You got to yeah. follow your passion. You know. Yeah. You got to do you. Yeah. Got to do me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm actually I'm excited to do. Can we do some tarot card reading? Oh yeah, my sure. God. Yeah, I'm like this. I'm so excited for this. Yeah, yeah, me too. So I have or I have an oracle deck and I have two tarot decks okay. um, that I use. Sure. Um, you know, oracle and tarot are pretty much the same, except tarot has like a uh, a set like uh, what's the word? Kind of like a storyline. It starts with the fool and it goes through this like storyline. Cool. And I'm um, excited. but you know, it never comes out in that order. Sure. sure. Otherwise you'd be perfect. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um this is good that we did the the you know that we talked first and now yeah, no, it was then great. I'm getting energy, you know, more energy oh. into this. So I'm gonna start with Oracle cards and see what comes out. Yeah, so that was weird that I got that picture of some kind of a cult and an angry man yelling. I don't know what that is or what that means to you, <laughs> if anything. <laughs> uh, possibilities, follow your dreams and make your mind up and believe in yourself. Damn, yeah. That's always a nice one. Mm -hmm. 
And I just got like the hermit card in reverse in my mind. Do you like not do you like keep to yourself a lot? Yeah. Okay. Boundaries, disrespectful enough is enough. Defend yourself. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trapped and running. This could be you or this could be someone that's on your mind or someone you're dealing with, but we can go into it further and see what comes out. All right. I'm going to do this deck first. Oh, that went right off the table. I wonder if I need to grab that. Okay, Ace of Cups. This is like, this stands for self-love. Um, so basically what it's saying is you have a lot of self-love here. Oh my God, the Hermit card. I was just thinking about that. Okay. All right, so you're doing some soul searching too. Mm -hmm. So you're you're discovering a lot about yourself in isolation and some kind of isolation um six of cups you could be like thinking about someone from your past as well <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> let me get cry <laughs> <laughs> it could be something that you're healing from especially with this like self-love card and the hermit card like that's a lot of self-discovery into your true self mm -hmm. um but it's something like from your past has like urged you to do this um oh two cups in reverse so you could i mean this could be true for anyone but it looks like you had a breakup some kind of a serious relationship maybe damn girl you're spot on so far. <laughs> Keep it coming. Our, it's not me. It's my fifth dimensional oh, self. Shit. Okay, okay. Page of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, this could be a couple of things. I might need to clarify it. This person could have a kid, or this could be some kind of message about finances that is that's not that's not pleasant. All right, the fool. Are you thinking about getting back with this person? Mm, I, ha I mean, I, I teeter-tottered, but no, I don't think I can do that. Okay. No. Yeah, it's say it would be a little too risky if you did. Mm. I just want to clarify this page of pentacles, so. Oh, I'm not taking all those. All right. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Uh, okay. So in this relationship, someone didn't invest that much into it. There might not have been an equal give and take. Yeah. <clears throat> someone was kind of greedy. This could be someone in your energy now. It could be you. Someone is like, um, it could be manipulation too. Uh, Eight of Swords in reverse. So, with the Hermit card and everything, you're you're kind of getting out of your head, releasing a lot of toxicities that are that have been holding you back. I can show you that if you want. It's kind of shiny. Page of Wands in reverse. So there's something, what I'm getting from that immediately is there's something that you haven't discovered about yourself yet. Um, that it's, there, there might be a struggle to explore some part of yourself. Mm -hmm. But what's it. holding you back here? Anxiety. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> the moon yeah that's uh there's some secrets here there this all right this could also mean several things this could also the the moon card stands for truths that haven't been revealed yet it could be truths about yourself that hasn't been revealed but it could also be someone else in your energy that's lying to you <laughs> hopefully not it could be this king of pentacles in reverse this is 
King of Pentacles in reverse is someone who's very, they can be very manipulative, kind of greedy with their time and energy, with their money. Um, we got the chariot. So that's some forward movement. Oh, okay. You might have a new love interest coming up pretty soon. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like to hear. Um, this, they might, hmm. the energy is kind of zigzag though. This mm. isn't necessarily slow energy. It's like, yeah. how do I describe it? Kind of like the, it's not the path of least resistance. There's going to be some struggles with it. Okay. Uh-oh, the sun in reverse. So you have to find... Before you get into this relationship too deeply, you have to like go through some, this hermit card, you gotta find, whatever you're trying to discover about yourself, you gotta discover that first. Hmm. Then you'll be able to enter this new relationship with unconditional love and self-fulfillment. And basically that's what you have to find is some self-fulfillment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could be running from a certain part of yourself that makes you feel trapped. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's the, the, the obstacle is that you felt like maybe you were disrespected, that you had to defend yourself. So you have these boundaries that maybe you've had to use in the past with this other relationship, but, not necessarily in this new one coming up and that's what needs to change and maybe that's the part of yourself that you need to discover that's that's pretty good yeah <laughs> okay i'll get one more oracle card because i'm drawn to do that i don't know why <laughs> envy all right this this is someone else someone is very envious of you and i have a feeling it's this king of pentacles this could be a man or a woman, but this is someone who wants to act on their greediness and their envy, all these negative vibes that I don't like it. Blah. I'm going to spray some white sage now. <laughs> <laughs> Just got blah from that, all that. Oh, wow. Oh, that's this, awesome. This is what I have. I could, you know, keep going. Yeah. Probably you don't ever you, have a as question. I say, you're, you're hitting some spots spot on shit especially i'm uh, like i hope yeah. i don't trigger you know <laughs> no no and like the funny <laughs> that you said the hermit thing is that's kind of been correct oh, there was this the breakup with the girlfriend i yeah I, even with my friends if it, my friends i like, cried on their shoulders kind of like mm. they they left me because they couldn't handle my oh my stress and my i thought i could or with them but no yeah so i uh no i am i, I have been been focusing on my podcast and it's where it, i am yeah more, more or less a, a hermit and where i'm just going to work coming here <laughs> i, I <laughs> totally mean some people it. on the side but you know yeah. you're right um yeah this it, it's it's very uh it's very it's pretty funny to hear all that that you said and it's just hidden spots <laughs> on so you're uh Chris it's is really exactly like, right. it's, yeah my, my tarot readings are more about you know discovering yourself more than any you know than like a fortune telling type no of you're thing. right uh, it yeah. really picks up on all that hidden energy that you're like oh boy <laughs> yeah exactly stuff that i don't really tell anybody yeah I'm telling my audience that's now, why yeah. i'm like oh god i'm doing this on a podcast <laughs> oh, <whatever. laughs> He's gonna like it. <laughs> no no if anything have other people want to do tarot card readers or maybe have uh well i definitely have you back and maybe you have some of yeah, our oh guests. yeah i'd love to actually do we do big group chats and that'd be great actually you could do some tarot card reading for some of the girls or whoever oh, we have yeah. on, on i would here. love to yeah this is my passion i love to do this stuff i love She's it amazing. you know what and what you're amazing <laughs> oh thank you you are <laughs> oh thank you this is great. No, we're definitely we're definitely gonna have you back on uh with uh future episodes and just having big group chats because I think your tarot card reading is amazing. It hit me uh in the certain spots. That was great. <laughs> no, seriously, it really did. I can definitely resonate with some of that stuff and actually keep yeah. my eyes open and my mind more aware. 
and yeah. maybe and maybe branch out and that's a, it's funny that the anxiety part of, about me that i am starting to notice more and more anxious. huh you feel anxious a lot uh, not like during this but like yeah. out doing other things and other do you get panic attacks no 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 not like crazy but this you know yeah. something like you're always it just sits there, you know, where mm, like, yeah. why does it have to sit there? There's that necessary. Like I, could, you're I could definitely do this too much. Exactly. Okay. I, I, yeah. okay. I overthink myself too much. I don't know. That's okay. You know what? The hermit card is my favorite card because I relate to that as well. Oh, oh, cool. You know, mm -hmm. you, you throughout life, we all go through like transformations. We're all on our own journey. The hermit card is the best card ever because it's like self-discovery, cool. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's upright too. It's not like it's in reverse. So it's okay, not like you're good. doing it wrong. <laughs> cool. No, it is. And this is you, like having this platform here is a very therapeutic. I'm meeting yeah. cool people just like yourself and just people from all around the world and all these cool topics. It, yes. It definitely numbs out the other reality that I have. Yeah. And kind of go through and other people, my other love lives and other people I'm meeting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Uh huh. I know. <laughs> but, I, exactly. Like, you're following your passion, and that's exactly what you should do. I, I think, my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Well, I'm very blessed that Chrissy's here now with me and uh, exploring yeah, this awesome world of so podcasting. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> she's a great addition. You're Is she? She's her. a great Thank asset you. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. I'm trying to think, um, is there any, do you guys have a YouTube channel that you started yet? Or do you, do you have anything yeah. like, like a website or any place that people can reach out to you if they want to like get a tarot card reader or just get some knowledge? Cause you're very knowledgeable and you're very, Oh, thank you. just talking to you today was very therapeutic and just hearing uh, what you're saying through the cards resonated with me and mm -hmm. it's just, it is. I'm like still self-working myself just to better myself and just get away from the past. That's just sometimes like I creep up on me a little bit and starts to yeah. scream at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I do. You. I, I, I have, I'm my main platform is TikTok. Oh, cool. Um, and I'm also on Facebook, although that's not as popular. I, for some reason I trigger a lot of people on Facebook and they're like, ah, you know, but, uh, TikTok um it's called phoenix rising tarot cool. it's the same for facebook too but um that's where you can find me and like message me for a private reading i do public readings too for people who don't want to pay for it uh because you know i believe in it in that much that it should be free for everybody but you know if you want to get into personal things like you know a public reading won't cut it sometimes yes but that's where you can find me that's so awesome yeah man <laughs> well uh i think uh, we'll wrap it up for today and uh okay. yeah well thank you again and uh yeah this was fun i loved being on here thank you so much for having me yeah no doubt okay. and will you stick with us for two more minutes oh okay sure <laughs> Trauma ain't all
feelings on all Out of conscious, nigga, feeling so long